This sound file contains the spoken word version of a Wikipedia article on American Airlines Flight 11. It is recorded by user S underscore Whistler, and the material was recorded on the 11th of April, 2012. American Airlines Flight 11, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. American Airlines Flight 11 was a passenger flight which was hijacked by five Al-Qaeda terrorists on September the 11th, 2001, as part of the September 11th attacks. They deliberately crashed it into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City, killing all 87 people aboard, plus the hijackers, and an unconfirmed number in the building's impact zone. The aircraft involved, a Boeing 767-223ER, was flying American Airlines' daily scheduled morning transcontinental service from Logan International Airport in Boston, Massachusetts, to Los Angeles International Airport in Los Angeles, California. Fifteen minutes into the flight, the hijackers injured at least three people, forcibly breached the cockpit, and overpowered the captain and first officer. Mohammed Attar, an Al-Qaeda member and trained pilot, took over the controls. Air traffic controllers noticed that the flight was in distress when the crew was no longer responding. They realized the flight had been hijacked when Mohammed Attar mistakenly transmitted his announcements for passengers to air traffic control. On board, flight attendants Amy Sweeney and Betty Ong contacted American Airlines and provided information about the hijackers and injuries to passengers and crew. The aircraft crashed into the tower at 8.46 a.m. local time. Many in the streets witnessed the strike. The Nordet brothers and Pavel Hlava captured the impact on video. Wolfgang Stehel had a webcam set up that captured the impact through a series of photographs. Before the hijacking was confirmed, news agencies began to report on the incident and speculated that the crash had been an accident. The impact and subsequent fire caused the North Tower to collapse, which resulted in hundreds of additional casualties. During the recovery effort at the World Trade Center site, workers recovered and identified dozens of remains from Flight 11 victims, but many body fragments could not be identified. Contents Flight Aftermath. Flight. The American Airlines Flight 11 aircraft was a Boeing 767-223ER, delivered in 1987, registration number N334AA. The capacity of the aircraft was 158 passengers, but the September the 11th flight carried 81 passengers and 11 crew members. This was a light load at 51% capacity, but higher than the average load factor for Flight 11 on Tuesday morning of 39% in the months preceding September the 11th. The 11 crew members were Captain John Oganowski, First Officer Thomas McGuinness, and Flight Attendants Barbara Arestegui, Jeffrey Coleman, Sarah Lowe, Karen Martin, Kathleen Nicosia, Betty Ong, Jean Roger, Diane Snyder, and Amy Sweeney. In all, 92 people on board were killed, including David Angle, the creator and executive producer of the television sitcom Frasier, his wife, Lynn Angel, and the actress, Barry Berenson. Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane had been scheduled to be on the flight, but arrived at the airport late. Boarding Mohammed Attar, the ringleader of the attacks, and a fellow hijacker, Abdulaziz Al-Omari, arrived at Portland International Jetport at 5.41 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on September the 11th, 2001. They boarded Colgan Air Flight 5930, which was scheduled to depart at 6 a.m. from Portland, Maine, and fly to Boston, Massachusetts. Both hijackers had first-class tickets with a connecting flight to Los Angeles. Atta checked in two bags, Amari none. When they checked in, the computer-assisted passenger pre-screening system, CAPS, selected Attar for extra luggage scrutiny, but he boarded without incident. The flight from Portland departed on time and arrived at Boston at 6.45 a.m. Three other hijackers, Walid al-Srihi, Whale al-Srihi, and Satam al-Sukami, arrived at Logan Airport at 6.45 a.m., having left their rental car in the airport parking facility. At 6.52 a.m., Marwan al-Shehi, 
The hijacker pilot of United Airlines Flight 175 made a call from a payphone in Logan Airport to Atta's cell phone. Since they were not given boarding passes for Flight 11 in Portland, Atta and Omari checked in and went through security in Boston. In the rushed check-in after the flight from Portland, airline officials did not load Atta's bags on Flight 11. Sukwami, Wal Al Sherry, and Walid Al Sherry also checked in for the flight in Boston. Wal Al Sherry and Sukwami each checked one bag. Walid Al Sherry did not check any bags. CAP selected all three for a detailed luggage check. As the CAP screening was only for luggage, the three hijackers did not undergo any extra scrutiny at the passenger security checkpoint. By 7.40 a.m., all five hijackers were aboard the flight, scheduled to depart at 7.45 a.m. Mohammed Atta sat in business class seat A.D. with Abdulaziz Al-Omari in 8G and Sukwami in 10B. Walid Al-Sheri and Wael Al-Sheri sat in first class seats 2B and 2A. At 7.46 a.m., one minute behind schedule, the aircraft received clearance to push back from gate B-32 and was cleared to taxi to the runway at 7.50 a.m. The aircraft began its takeoff run from Logan International Airport at 7.59 a.m. from runway 4R. Hijacking The 9-11 Commission estimated that the hijacking began at 8.14 a.m., when the pilot stopped responding to requests from Boston Air Route Traffic Control Center. It is believed that Walid al-Sheri made the first move. At 8.13 and 29 seconds, as the aircraft was passing over central Massachusetts at 26,000 feet, 7,900 meters, the pilots responded to a request from Boston ARTCC to make a 20-degree turn to the right. At 8.13 and 47 seconds, Boston ARTCC told the pilots to ascend to a cruising altitude of 35,000 feet, 11,000 meters, but received no response. At 8.16 a.m., the aircraft leveled off at 29,000 feet, 8,800 meters, and shortly thereafter deviated from its scheduled path. Boston ARTCC made multiple attempts to talk to Flight 11 without reply, and at 8.21, the flight stopped transmitting its Mode C transponder signal. According to flight attendants Amy Sweeney and Betty Ong, who contacted American Airlines during the hijacking, the hijackers had stabbed flight attendants Karen Martin and Barbara Aristegoy and slashed the throat of passenger Daniel Lewin. Lewin, an internet entrepreneur, had served as an officer in the elite Sayaret Matkal Special Operations Unit of the Israeli military. Lewin was seated in 9B. Sukwami was directly behind him in 10B. The 9-11 Commission suggested that Sukwami may have stabbed and killed Lewin after he attempted to stop the hijacking. Lewin was believed to be the first fatality in the 9-11 attacks. During a four-minute call to the American Airlines Operations Center, Ong provided information about the lack of communications with the cockpit, lack of access to the cockpit, and passenger injuries. She provided the seat locations of the hijackers, which later helped investigators to determine their identities. At 8.23 and 38 seconds, Atta tried to make an announcement to the passengers, but pressed the wrong button and sent the message to Boston ARTCC. Air traffic controllers heard Atta announce, We have some planes. Just stay quiet and you'll be okay. We are returning to the airport. At 8.24 and 56 seconds, he announced, Nobody move. Everything will be okay. If you try to make any moves, you'll endanger yourself and the airplane just stay quiet. As before, Atta thought he was speaking only to the passengers, but his voice was picked up and recorded by air traffic controllers. After the transmissions by Atta and the inability to contact the airliner, air traffic controllers at Boston ARTCC realized the flight had been hijacked. At 8.26 a.m., the plane turned south. At 8.32 a.m., the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, Command Center in Herndon, Virginia, notified FAA headquarters. At 8.33 and 59 seconds, Atta announced, Nobody move, please. We are going back to the airport. Don't try to make any stupid moves. 
At 8.37 and 8 seconds, the pilots of United Airlines Flight 175 verified Flight 11's location and heading to flight control. Boston ARTCC bypassed standard protocols and directly contacted the North American Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD, Northeast Air Defense Sector, NEEDS, in Rome, New York. NEEDS called on two F-15 fighter jets at Otis Air Force Base in Bourne, Massachusetts, to intercept. Officials at Otis spent a few minutes getting authorization for the fighters to take off. ATA completed the final turn towards Manhattan at 8.43 a.m. The order to dispatch the fighters at Otis was given at 8.46 a.m., and the F-15s took off at 8.53 a.m. By that time, American Airlines Flight 11 had already crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Of the four hijacked aircraft on 9-11, the nine minutes of advance notification about the hijacking of Flight 11 was the most time that NORAD had to respond before the aircraft crashed into its target. Crash At 8.46 a.m. and 30 seconds, Mohammed Attar intentionally crashed American Airlines Flight 11 into the northern facade of the North Tower, Tower 1, of the World Trade Center. The aircraft, traveling at about 404 knots, 465 miles per hour, and carrying about 10,000 U.S. gallons, 38,000 liters, of jet fuel, hit between the 93rd and 99th floors of the North Tower. Witnesses saw the plane flying at low altitude over Manhattan and thought the aircraft was in distress. Lieutenant William Walsh of the FDNY, who appears in the documentary film 9-11, witnessed the aircraft. We were under the impression he looked like he was going down, but we didn't hear any mechanical difficulty. We couldn't figure out why an American Airlines plane would be so low in downtown Manhattan. We sort of expected him to veer off and go into the Hudson, but he just rose a little bit. His altitude leveled off, and he was headed straight for the Trade Center. So just before he got to the Trade Center, it seemed as though he gained power. We were just watching this airplane on target for the World Trade Center. All of a sudden, boom, he disappears into the Trade Center. The damage caused to the North Tower destroyed any means of escape at the impact zone or above it. All stairwells and elevators from the 92nd floor up were rendered impassable, trapping 1,344 people. According to the Commission report, hundreds were killed instantly by the impact. The rest were trapped and died from the subsequent fire and smoke, the eventual collapse, or, in some cases, after jumping or falling from the building. Elevator shafts channeled burning jet fuel through the building. At least one elevator shaft carried burning fuel downwards, exploding on the 77th floor, the 22nd floor, and at street level on the west side lobby. Jules Nordet, a French cameraman, and Paul Hlava, a Czech immigrant, videotaped the crash. A webcam set up by Wolfgang Stahel at an art exhibit in Brooklyn to take images of Lower Manhattan every four seconds also captured images of Flight 11 crashing into the North Tower. A WNYW news camera, left rolling on the ground, also captured audio of the crash and video of the immediate aftermath. News organizations at first reported an explosion or incident at the World Trade Center. CNN broke into a commercial at 8.49 a.m. with the headline that read, World Trade Center Disaster. Carol Lynn, who was the first anchor to break the news of the attack, said, Yeah, this just in. You are looking at obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. CNN Center right now is just beginning to work on this story, obviously calling our sources and trying to figure out exactly what happened, but clearly something relatively devastating happening this morning there on the south end of the island of Manhattan. That is, once again, a picture of the towers of the World Trade Center. Later, in an on-air phone call from his office at the CNN New York Bureau, CNN Vice President of Finance, Sean Murtagh, reported that a large passenger commercial jet had hit the World Trade Center. Eventually, other television networks interrupted regular broadcasting with news of the crash. President George W. Bush was arriving at the Emma E. Booker Elementary School in Sarasota, Florida. 
Initial reports speculated that the crash had been an accident until United Airlines Flight 175, another Los Angeles-bound Boeing 767, crashed into the tower at about 9.03 a.m. Aftermath After the crash, the North Tower burned and collapsed. Although the impact itself caused extensive structural damage, the long-lasting fire, ignited by jet fuel, was blamed for the structural failure of the tower. In addition to the aircraft passengers and building occupants, hundreds of rescue workers also died when the tower collapsed. Cantor Fitzgerald, LP, an investment bank on floors 101 to 105 of World Trade Center 1, lost 658 employees, considerably more than any other employer. Rescue workers at the World Trade Center site began to discover body fragments from Flight 11 victims within days of the attack. Some workers found bodies strapped to airplane seats and discovered the body of a flight attendant with her hands bound, suggesting the hijackers might have used plastic handcuffs. Within a year, medical examiners had identified the remains of 33 victims who had been on board Flight 11. They identified two other Flight 11 victims, including the lead flight attendant, Karen Martin, after body fragments were discovered near Ground Zero in 2006. In April 2007, examiners using newer DNA technology identified another Flight 11 victim. The remains of two hijackers, potentially from Flight 11, were also identified and removed from Memorial Park in Manhattan. The remains of the other hijackers have not been identified and are buried with other unidentified remains at this park. Sequami's passport survived the crash and landed in the street below. Soaked in jet fuel, it was picked up by a passerby who gave it to a New York City Police Department detective shortly before the South Tower collapsed. Investigators retrieved Mohammed Attar's luggage, which had not been loaded onto the flight. In it, they found Amari's passport and driver's license, a video cassette for a Boeing 757 flight simulator, a folding knife, and pepper spray. In a recording a few months later in Afghanistan, Al-Qaeda's leader, Osama bin Laden, took responsibility for the attack. The attack on the World Trade Center exceeded even bin Laden's expectations. He had expected only the floors above the plane strikes to collapse. The flight recorders for Flight 11 and Flight 175 were never found. After the attacks, the flight number for flights on the same route with the same takeoff time were changed to American Airlines Flight 25. These flights now use a Boeing 737 instead of a Boeing 767. An American flag is flown on the jet bridge of gate B-32 from which Flight 11 departed Logan Airport. At the National September 11th Memorial, the names of 87 victims of Flight 11 are inscribed on the North Pool on panels N1 and N2 and panels N74 and N76.